Building after Irma, many of you sustained damage either to your homes, apartments, or businesses. And the process of filing insurance claims, getting FEMA assistance, it can be overwhelming. Joining me this morning, Attorney John Phillips to help us navigate the process. And, and, and let me just point out, you're not just here as an attorney this morning. You went to your house in Ortega, and uh, Irma was not kind to you. No, it's not. There's video that I think y'all have. Yeah, we, we were under four feet of water. Depends on where you measure, but two to four feet of water. Um, there, there's our house. Um, normally, I don't show where, my, where we live, but we're not going to be there for a few months, as you can see. So that was taken by uh, one of the boats rescuing people. And so, you know, we have, a, we have three small children, including a one-month-old. Uh, and we were evacuated. We listened to Mayor Curry and left, and we came back to uh, the aftermath of that. Now, when you get in the house and you see that you've lost things that sentimentally you can't replace, you've lost other possessions that will hopefully be covered by insurance, you get over the shock. You basically have to follow this process. What's been the biggest frustration that you think is, you know, commonplace with both you and others who are in the same situation? So there's, there's two types of insurance that cover these claims. There's, for us, it's just the, the flood insurance. If, if trees come down or rain comes down, that's your homeowner's insurance. And flood insurance was written by Congress. And so it, it's, it's not as friendly as you'd hope. And there's a lot of exceptions. And we had to, the first thing we had to do was get in there with masks on and inventory everything. Um, because you don't want to have to fight that later. Um, uh, and and that, that, was, that was the hard part. And then as you go through there, you see like my baby book and, and things that you wanted to hand down to your kids. And it's the sentimental things that money will never compensate. Um, and then, uh, particularly in Jacksonville, with so many hit, the issue is going to be, the second issue is going to be competing for resources. Everybody wants the same, same contractors, people. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that's going to keep us out of the house for for a while, but we've had wonderful friends who've, who've taken care of us. Um, you know, Dr. Shane Silver and others have, have pitched in and, and helped us get back to a new normal. I think you also have to realize in a situation like this that you're playing a, a chess game. Yes, the insurance adjusters are there to help you cover your things. They're also there on behalf of the insurance company and they want to pay out as little money as possible. So you've got to learn how to create a relationship so that you get what you deserve. You do, and there, there were two things that we did. Number one, our our, uh, our contractor was from Oklahoma State. He, he was an Oklahoma State fan, came with the shirt on. And so I immediately started up a conversation about Justin Blackman and kind of made a joke about crawling into our crawl space and taking pictures for him. You know, and, and, and these people are human too, jumping from tragedy to tragedy. And some people are in a bad state of mind when they visit and are angry. And I get it, I'm a victim, but they also control your fate. And so you, you do want to start with kindness. Nurture a relationship. You do basically. want to nurture a relationship. And you do want to document everything by email. That's something that we've done. Okay, you've said this. Now we're going to go ahead and, and, and travel under that assumption. This is more footage of my neighborhood. Now you, you, you also, I know you, you've got a meeting with some of your neighbors as well. You can deal with a lot of these issues as a community. So it's important to compare notes, find out who's having success, who's not, and what the issues are. It, it is, particularly with the, with the flood insurance. Um, for those of us lucky to have them, look, there are people on the north side that, that's dealing with straight FEMA. And FEMA will pay claims kind of willy-nilly. At least with the flood insurance, you have a contract, and they've got to live by that contract. And it's capped, and there's, there's rules. You know, if you have a baseball card collection, I had partially my baseball card collection. Any collections you have, you only get $2,500 no matter what you had in there, art, all of that. And so there's, you know, there, there are hurdles that you have to get through, um, but it, you, you've, you've just got to be as prudent as possible. Some people have turned to what are called public adjusters, and public adjusters will come in there and help you inventory everything, um, and, and they'll take a percentage of that at the end. But they, they in do... In theory, you're going to get more than you would In theory, you're going to get more. Like, right. you know, you, you're not going to think about all the things that you've lost. And so, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to approach it. There actually aren't a lot of lawyers that take flood insurance claims because they're, they're federally administrated and it's hard to take on the federal government. Yeah. Um, I know some firms are taking the, the, the home insurance coverage, you know, where, where rain's coming or trees are coming down.